What's up, Greg, and welcome back to a very special video. I have something super exciting to show you guys today because I think I have found my new favorite TV show. It's called Mountain Monsters. The reason it's so exciting and so special to me is that you guys have seen me talk about kids' channels on YouTube, right? Think back to like when I talked about the Sharer family, remember? That family that was obsessed with finding like a pond monster in their pond in their backyard. Or you had those YouTubers who wanted to find the Game Master. They had this villain that like, they were always chasing in their videos and it was all clearly fake and they never found him. And it kind of seems like they didn't really write out the script at all and they kind of just made it up as they went along. Well, I have found a TV show that is like that, but instead of on YouTube, it's on TV. And instead of for kids, it's for people who watch the Travel Channel, which I don't think is kids. But this show is legitimately like the quality of a 2016 children's YouTube channel. It's awesome. It seems like it's unscripted. They just dick around in the woods. I love it. I have not watched an entire episode of it yet, but I've watched a lot of clips of it on YouTube and it is my new favorite show. I'll show you one of my favorite clips of it right now. It's called Buck, Huckleberry, and Jeff are kidnapped. We're in Wood County, West Virginia, and that rogue team pushed all three of our guys in the back of that van. Me and Wild Bill's gonna haul ass across this field and try to catch up with them. One of the only downfalls in the show is that all of the members of the Mountain Monster Hunting Squad have the thickest southern accents in the entire world. This show needs subtitles like 100% of the time, so if you're not following right off the bat, I don't blame you. Here's what's happening. So this show follows this group of mountain monster hunters. They hunt monsters in like the southern United States around like the Appalachian area. And I guess during one of their mountain monster hunting activities, Buck, Huckleberry, and Jeff, three members of the crew, are kidnapped by masked men. This immediately intrigued me because in this show, their only adversaries are monsters. You'll see, they they it's like they hunt like Bigfoot, Wolfman, Chupacabras, etc. So the idea that they're getting kidnapped by three men wearing masks is very intriguing to me. It's like, are they working for a monster? Are three like normal guys, their day-to-day -day job is working for a a monster? Does it pay them? But nevertheless, these three get kidnapped. Uh, the other two members of the crew are there looking, watching it happen, and they go off chasing them. Now you can have your camera back. Take the hood off. You don't know where the hell you're at. You can film all you want now, big boy. <laughs> Say cheese. The van stops. A guy gets out and comes back and gives us our camera. Super nice of them to give them their camera back and to let their entire camera crew actually come with while they're being kidnapped. Very generous, kidnappers don't usually let them do that. Take cheese. Also in, in this moment, I feel like we should be worried for these three guys' safety. They're being kidnapped, they're taken somewhere they don't know where they are, they're probably gonna get eaten by a monster. But then they start showing clips of like confessional footage of them talking about what was happening that was clearly taken after this whole thing subsides. So I'm no longer worried about them at all. Obviously they're all safe after this. You all right, Jeffrey? Yeah, yeah, I'm doing fine. Keep the fucking talking to a minimum. Jesus, dude, they switched up so fast. They were like, go ahead and record. Yeah, we'll film as much as you want. Here's your camera even. And we'll smile and say hi to your camera. And then they're just like talking and back about how scared they are. And the guy's like, shut the fuck up. Keep it down back there. Keep the talking to a minimum, all right? And keep the filming to a maximum. You guys are gonna wanna get this on camera, buddy. Maybe they don't want them talking because it's gonna ruin the footage. They know how good this is gonna be for the show and they're like, shut the fuck up, you're gonna ruin it. We're the producers of the show. Shh, we're gonna make great TV together. Me and brother Willie, we're recon around this cabin. We're gonna get up there and put our eyeball on it. See what the hell is going on with our team members. Huh? I don't know what it is about these guys, but every time it cuts to a confessional, not only are they just like incoherent, but they're also screaming. See what pales going on with our team It honestly actually makes it seem like whatever is about to happen is extremely traumatizing. If like when they get them in front of the camera for the first time afterwards, they're like, I don't know what the fuck just happened, dude. Uh, anyway, the masked men take them to this cabin in the middle of the woods. They take them inside. They chain up the cameraman and then they sit them down. The light kicks on right in our face. You can see a mirror on the wall, and you can see a speaker and a camera. I've never seen a place like this, but it looks like an interrogation room. A mirror, a speaker, and a camera? I've never seen a room like this in my goddamn life. That's the scariest, most nonsensical combination of things I can think of, dude. A room has no right having all three of those things. Actually, um, I hate to admit it, but the room I'm sitting in right now actually does have all three of those things. <laughs> a camera, a speaker, and then there's a mirror over there. Because I'm a monster. I've never seen a place like this, 
but it looks like an interrogation room. You've never seen a place like this? There's literally episodes of this show where you guys like fight Bigfoot and you're thrown for a loop by a room with a camera and a speaker and a mirror. This whole situation is weird. <laughs> I mean, yeah, man, I agree. Hello? Oh shit, he said sit down. Sorry. Oh no, dude, it's another. Another human clearly wearing a mask. No! Oh, damn, I'm sitting. As soon as that skeleton appeared in my face and said sit down. I sat down. Hell yeah, you did, dude. I love this dude. This dude's name is Buck. His commentary that they cut to every time is literally just like repeating exactly what just happened. It's a shot of him sitting down and then he's like, I sat down, man. Do you know who I am? You the guy that killed the Stonus Giant. Yeah. Yeah. No. Fuck! <laughs> that was our only guess. I want to make a deal. A deal? Let me tell you what right now, old boy. There's no way in hell we're gonna help you kill another damn Bigfoot. I never said I was after a Bigfoot. Starting to think these guys might be a little bit out of their element. They actually have no clue what's going on. Do you know who I am? Yeah, you're the dude who killed the stonish giant. What? No. Oh, that's right. Then you want us to kill a Bigfoot. No, I'm Brian. From the party last week? You don't remember me? The stonish Brian? No, just Brian! I want you to go back to Lee County, Virginia. I want you to capture the woman of the woods. The woman of the woods? The woman of the woods is someone we don't want to mess with. Okay, that was clearly just one of them wearing a hood, right? Like, very clearly just like an old man wearing a hood in a thermal camera. I like that this is the clip they show for the woman of the woods being someone you don't want to mess with, too. Like, the only thing I'm getting from this is that, like, they have a hot body temperature. You do not want to deal with the woman of the woods, dude. She it has a fever. As you can tell from this clip, she is scalding hot. This team's already had one heck of an encounter with her. When we were in Lee County, she touched Huckleberry and Jeff <laughs> and marked them for death. She affected Jeff's mind, maybe for life. Now you're probably thinking, dang, poor Jeff. This dude gets attacked by a woman of the woods and his brain is still like all fried from it. Well, let me tell you, dude, you don't even know the half of it because this kind of shit happens to Jeff in every episode. I don't know what it is, but from every YouTube clip I've watched, if one of them gets attacked by a monster, it is Jeff, and every time he is traumatized, as you could probably tell from the clip of him screaming. Ah! I think they might all be in the wrong profession, but especially Jeff. Please, Jeff, find a new job. All right, we help you get this woman of the woods. How's this benefit us? Yeah, Buck, are you really the one that should be brokering this deal? Are you really the one with the authority to be like, all right, yeah, we'll do it. We'll go back and capture the woman of the woods. No skin off my bones. Jeff is just sitting there sweating. Uh, yeah, we will, um, <laughs> we can totally help with that. Uh, no, that's fine. I, I liked it. I actually, I like the woman of the woods. If you capture the woman of the woods in exchange, I'll bring you those who killed the Stonish Giant. You didn't kill him? No. Yeah, he already said that, dude. Are you guys paying attention at all? How do I know the lore of the show better than you do? Why do they keep trying to pin the stonish giant on this guy like they're crooked cops or something? Where were you on the night of the stonish giant's death? Oh my god, dude. For the last time, I did not kill the stonish giant. Aha! We never mentioned that the stonish giant even died. Yeah, you did. You did like five times. Oh yeah? Then explain this. That's a picture of you holding the stonish giant's decapitated head. Did you kill him? Ah, uh, shit, I've been caught again. He says he can deliver who killed the stonish giant. If he can make good on that deal, that's something we're really gonna have to consider. That's something that I'm really gonna have to consider and Jeff's really gonna have to deal with. I've never lied to you and I never will. Well, well. Yeah, you kinda did. You kinda did. 30 seconds ago when you said you didn't kill the stonish giant. I didn't kill the fucking stonish giant! There are secrets you've yet to learn. Why is that a big surprising moment? I don't know everything in the whole world! Everything you need is in front of you. 
Where'd you go? So the skeleton disappears. These guys get all pissed off and they're like, where'd he go? They're sick of all the riddles and all of the cryptic messages. So Buck takes a chair and he just slams through the glass to try to get to the bottom of this. And let me tell you, nothing will prepare you for what they find on the other side of this glass. Damn. Oh my god. Holy shit. It's a hog's head. What the hell? Maybe this is crazy, but to me, if you hunted monsters for a living, like weird cryptic things like this wouldn't be that surprising to you. So I just love how surprised they are. And like the notion that this is totally outlandish, totally out of the realm of possibilities after they were just talking about like hunting the stonish giant. Just the fact that they found a hog's head. A hog's head? Doesn't make any sense. All of a sudden right there behind it, this damn hog's head. That's so true, Huckleberry, dude. That you could not have said it better. It was a hog's head. I love the sound effects in this show so much. They get so much mileage out of those impact sound effects. And I love a good impact sound effect as much as the next guy. So I really appreciate how many they were able to get out of that hog's head reveal. Damn. Oh my God. Holy shit. It's a hog's head. What the hell? Blood coming out of its nose, its ears, its eyes. What the hell does that mean? I don't know, man. Don't ask me. They go up to the hog's head. Did you kill the stoners, giant? Then the other two members of the gang show up and they make their way into the back room to get a closer look at the hog's head. Holy shit. I'm telling you guys, there was someone in here. Dude, if this is the skeleton's lair, he's actually got kind of a sick setup, dude. He's got like a Pepsi vending machine fridge here. He's got a little sink in the background. Skeleton's not living too bad, honestly. Half expecting it to pan over. There's like a gaming setup. He's got one of those sick gaming chairs and two monitors. They're gone. There's nothing else we can do. We have a lot to fill you two in on. Let's do it away from here. I don't feel safe. Oh, dude, what happened? Why not? You okay? <laughs> Did something happen? I don't get it. Now, you might not have realized it, but each one of the members of the team actually has specific roles on the team. As you can see in the, like, opening of the show. You got Trapper, the team leader. You got Buck, the expert caller. He might not be an expert himself, but he will definitely call one for you. You got Huckleberry, security. Can't believe that motherfucker was security the whole time, dude. What did he do to prevent them from getting kidnapped? He was sitting there with them chained up, just being like, I just gotta keep my eyes peeled and in case anything funny happens. Good thing this is all very ordinary to me. Then you've got Jeff the researcher. He's always researching different monsters, different ways of kind of healing from the trauma that his adventures have put him through. Willie the trap builder, and of course, Wild Bill the expert tracker. He's gonna track down the experts and then Buck's gonna call him over. Now you probably wanna see them actually getting into action, you know, hunting a real monster. Cause in that first clip, they were kind of honestly being hunted. So you wanna see them in their element going to investigate some kind of supernatural monster sighting. Which brings us to this clip, Fanged Creature Attacks the Ames Team. Alright guys, the next creature we're going to investigate is one we have a history with. We're going after the Cherokee Death Cat. One thing you'll come to learn through watching clips of this show is they have a history with every monster. You could name the most obscure monster ever, the Patagonia Pants Swindler, and they'd be like, oh yeah, we've got history with that guy. <laughs> Yeah, Buck actually dated him in college, right, Buck? Yeah, you do not want to mess with him, man. He'll swindle your pants. We know this death cat is nothing to mess with. It's a huge feline, weighing in at 500 pounds. Holy shit, dude, that's what it looks like? Oh my god. Weighing in at 500 pounds. 500 pounds? This thing is jacked. Why did they make it so muscular? Look at the size of its arm, dude. The crazy thing is, if they got close enough to it with their camera crew to get a detailed enough idea of what it looks like that they could make this 3D model, why not just show the clip of it? That's what I want to see. I want to see real footage of this thing. Don't show me a fucking 3D render. Unless this was the footage that they got from it, in which case, give your cameraman a raise, dude. This is some crazy footage. Dude, I want, I'm gonna go to a personal trainer, and when they ask me, like, what kind of body type I want, I'm gonna show them a picture of the Cherokee Death Cat. Yeah, I want arms that are sort of, like, three feet wide, and I want spikes coming out of the front of my face. Basically, just make me an abomination. Just make me a horrific, unnatural entity. Well, Bubba, we heard you had a pretty interesting encounter out here. Well, yeah, we did. So when we're coming out of the woods, I was along about that tree right back there. And Dad was in front of me on that little bike, and he just stopped dead. And he said, did you see that? And I said, see what, Dad? And he said, that big cat. And he said, son, that cat was eight or nine foot long. Said it was huge. Dad, 
going? Eight or nine feet, man. Dude, if that cat they showed was nine feet long, that's so big. I'm sorry, Buck, Huckleberry, and Jeff. You do not stand a chance. What are you gonna do? A 500 pound, nine foot long demonic lion? What is your plan? This dude, Huckleberry, is not enough security for you guys. You're gonna need more than Huckleberry to protect you from a nine foot long lion. And that said, leapt through the air and hit right there on that bear spot on that tree. Okay, so the story is that this lion jumped from this log all the way over to that, that tree. Somehow landed in this tree without snapping it in half, first of all. And his dad saw it and he didn't? How do you miss that? If anything, you would at least hear it, right? You would hear like the loud thud of a 500 pound creature slamming into a tree. What were you doing when this happened? I'm interested to see how far it is from that log up to where it lit up in that tree. That's a pretty long shot. I want to get a measurement and see exactly how far this big cat jumped. That's right, Buck. That is what you did. Good memory, man. These big predator cats, they don't fool around. This thing could be on top of you before you blink your eyes. You're done. Something big's been through here. What's your solution to that? He was like, man, this thing could snap my neck from behind and I would never even know it was there. <laughs> well, anyway, let's, um, let's go. So their plan right now seems like just to walk into the woods with hunting rifles. And that's their whole plan. I'm kind of 50-50 on if bullets would even have any effect on that monstrosity. But if it did, imagine them finding this like one of a kind, once in a lifetime species that no one's ever seen before and they just fucking kill it. They find out it's actually a completely peaceful creature. Like it didn't even want to kill them and they're still like, get it. Check this out. There's a oh. pee post. This is fresh pee dude. Oh. We just found a scent post. You can see claw marks almost seven feet in the air and fresh urine at the base of the tree. This has to be the death cat. It does? The only thing I can think of that can scratch and pee is a death cat that no one has ever seen before. Okay, guys, warning. Here comes another oopsie daisy we traumatized Jeff moment. So the other two guys, Buck and Huckleberry, start to walk off into the woods not realizing that Jeff isn't with them. Jeff... Meanwhile, is still staring at the tree that has claw marks and pee on it. Like he just realized that there was a claw mark and pee on it. Hey guys, there's claw marks on this tree. Yeah, Jeff, they all they all saw that already, man. They talked about that like five minutes ago. You were also standing right there, so I don't know how you didn't see that. Jeff is useless, man. I'm starting to think that actually the other people bringing him along is actually a little more nefarious than I first thought. I think his purpose there is to be fed to a monster. I think they bring him as bait. They've kind of realized that monsters sort of gravitate towards him. He must just have that kind of energy that like monsters want to hurt him. So they just bring him along to like attract the most horrid things on the earth. Anyway, Buck and Huckleberry walk out of sight and they're walking for a long time before they realize that Jeff is gone. And then Jeff starts hollering from within the woods. Jeff! 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 Here's the tree we left him at. He's not here. Here's the tree we left him at. Here's the tree we left him at. You guys didn't even realize you left him until you were like a mile away from him. How do you know where you left him? See, it's shit like that that makes me think that they're up to no good. Here's the tree we tied him to. <laughs> Where'd he go? There's like a trail of blood leading away. Oh, thank goodness. This will lead us right to the monster. Uh, and Jeff, of course. And our friend Jeff. Yeah. Wait, Jeff, hold up, Jeff. Yeah, grab it. Yeah. It locked yeah. eyes on me. Oh my gosh, that scared me to death. Jeff, talk to me, dude. What's wrong? What's wrong, Jeff? What the fuck, man? Why won't you talk to us? He already said it locked eyes on me, and they're like, what's wrong with you, dude? You're acting weird. We just got up to Jeff, and he shook up. Jeff. Settle down, settle what down. What happened, dude? Still taste his breath. What? Did you kiss the death cat? Looks like what? Did you just say? Dude, you know me and the death cat have a history, right? That's kind of fucked up. Are you hurt anywhere, Jeff? Are you hurt at all, dude? <gasps> he looks fine to me. Jeff said when we got separated, that death cat came out of the tree right on top of him. I'm just imagining he's doing this confessional like right outside the car window where Jeff is like freaking out. Jeff almost died. That idiot almost got killed by a death cat, dude. Can you believe that? I think the best thing we can do is get Jeff out of these woods. Come on up. And try to talk to him in the morning. That could have ended really, really bad. Yeah, that could have ended really bad, man. 
Thank God it only broke Jeff's mind. All right, guys, well, I hope you've enjoyed this look at Mountain Monsters, my new favorite TV show that I've never watched. If you're not subscribed yet, make sure you subscribe and turn on my notifications to join Greg. Greg's what I call my subscriber base here on YouTube. We are the fastest growing army on YouTube. Please do not look that up. Hope you guys enjoyed this one, and I'll see you in the next one.